Hi, this is John. This is part two of a two-part series on making custom nose cones. In part one, we made the mold, and that was a lot of work. Now, in part two, we're actually going to pull a nose cone part from this mold. Making the mold was a lot of work, but now comes the payoff, because not only is it easier to make the nose cone than it was to make the mold, we can make any number of nose cones from this mold as long as we're careful. So, if you have a one-off like I do, then this is a lengthy process, but you can get the part you want. If you need multiples, this technique will let you produce multiple fiberglass nose cones to identical specifications. The first step is to wash off our mold to remove any residue, such as PVA, from the previous job. You also want to look to see if there's any nicks, pits, or anything else that the epoxy might stick to when we start making the part. If you have little pits or scratches or nicks, you can fill them, sand them up to 400. Just make sure everything's clean and smooth when you're done. If this is the first use of your mold, or if you've made any repairs, it's good to wax it just to fill in any pits or scratches such as left by a knife or sandpaper. Since this is the first use on this mold, I'm going to go ahead and wax it. And just like waxing the plug, we just wipe on the wax with one towel, and then we'll polish it off later once it glazes over with another towel. And as always, we want to be prepared to go before mixing any fiberglass. I've cut out enough for one layer of four ounce cloth and three layers of six ounce cloth plus a few extra strips. And to deal with the nose cone, I've slit one edge in on the pieces that are going to lap over there. Many nose cones that are longer and thinner don't need that because they don't have as sharp curves, but this one has a very blunt nose and I want to make sure I can get the cloth into the mold with no air bubbles. A couple extra little strips are useful for filling in around the ends and otherwise have our six ounce cloth cut out and our four ounce cloth. And now we're ready to start making the part. We have our mold, it's been cleaned, inspected, waxed if necessary, and sprayed with a parting film such as PVA. One of the things that's important is we need to make both halves simultaneously. We don't want to make one half, mix more epoxy, and make the second half because we need to, the two halves to reach the leather stage at the same time. Also, dealing with the mold can be difficult because they tend to rock and move around. So I've made another version, slightly larger than what we did for the parting board, to hold both of them at the same time so they're easier to work with. So we're ready to get started. The first step, as before, is to paint a layer of epoxy over the mold surfaces. You can come right up to the edge, but you don't want to get a lot on the lip. Then we can start applying our cloth. First, start with your lightest weight cloth, and then proceed to the layers of heavier weight. Just like when making the mold halves, we'll need some thickened epoxy. In this case, I've used fibers again to help make a step where the surface of the nose steps down from the shoulder. And here's the first layer of six ounce cloth applied. And we will go ahead and finish out the other two layers using full length pieces now.
it's helpful to have the cloth slit before you start working so you can get it into the curves. The layers go on quickly and once we have our nose cone to the desired thickness, just need to make sure all the cloth is wet and we don't have any bubbles. And now that we have our two halves laid up, we'll let it sit until the leather stage. Partial cure when it's still pliable. Once the epoxy reaches the leather stage, we're going to trim off the excess from both halves. The leather stage is identified when the epoxy loses most of its stickiness, but yet is still somewhat flexible. Ideally, the consistency is thick enough that it won't move around when you cut against it something like heavy leather. What we want to do is carefully slice away the excess leaving us two perfect halves, one in each mold half. To test to see if it's right for cutting, cut off the end or some other area, you should see that the knife slides through it without distorting too much. If it stretches or appears to be moving within the mold, let it cure a little more. With a sharp knife, you should be able to cut off the excess by holding it such that the blade is parallel to and flat against the lip. This is why the leather stage is so key. If we waited until full cure, not only would we have trouble joining the two halves, getting a chemical bond, but we'd have to saw the excess off. See? Nice clean edge. Just do that all the way around the half. Once the pieces have been trimmed, we can test fit the mold. You can use the lines at the holes that we drilled to line it up. Make sure it'll close. And there's how the two pieces will fit together. Now we're ready to join the mold halves. The epoxy is still at the leather stage. It's far from fully cured, which means that more epoxy will provide a chemical bond. So we mix up a little, thickened with fibers, and we have a little clear. I like to just make sure that there is some epoxy at the edge. I'm just dampening off the edge where the two halves will touch to make sure there's some epoxy to fill in that joint. We also want to make sure that we have some epoxy to fill in from the inside to guarantee as consistent a surface as possible. So, we'll put our halves together. Again, lining up with the holes. To join the mold. Now this is where those holes really come into play. We use our pins to both align and connect the mold halves. Squeeze the tool, place the pin in, release. You do this all the way around and lock the mold halves together. Now that our mold is locked up in alignment, we can examine the inside, make sure there are no gaps. If there's any gaps or other irregularities, fill them with thickened epoxy. If you have a more traditional pointed nose cone, you may also want to fill in the tip with thickened epoxy.
since it will be very difficult to get the reinforcement band in all the way to the tip. Now the reinforcement band. We actually have a pretty good bond already, but there's no continuous fibers running across the joint between the two halves. There are no continuous fibers because we cut the two halves. And while we have some epoxy in between, it's not as strong as epoxy reinforced with fiberglass. So we're going to lay a thin strip of fiberglass into the mold crossing the two halves. This won't give us as much strength as multiple layers, but it will definitely give us a good reinforcement across that narrow joint. So wet out your strip first to make sure it's saturated. And then we drape it into the mold so that it spans the whole width of the joint from the tip to the base. Then we smooth that in place. It will probably take some effort to reach down to the tip, especially with a more pointed nose cone, but do your best to get the cloth adhered the full length. And with the reinforcement strip in place, we can leave the mold to fully cure. Okay, once the part is fully cured, trim off the excess fiberglass and we're ready to open up the mold. Once again, our little wedges will help us separate. Work it in all the way around. And there we have our part. Sometimes it might take a little flexing of the mold to get the part out. And there we have it, our molded nose cone. We can make more if we needed to using the same mold. The next step here is just to wash these, clean them, get rid of PVA. Uh, if they're a little excess flashing, of epoxy, trim that down, and we're ready to sand, prime, and paint.